What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninjas, filthiest pitches of the day. I'm Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with Will Leahy, and we're going to start with a swing around the league. I'm going to start with Brady Singer, who may have been the pitcher of the day yesterday. Singer had 10 strikeouts in seven innings, getting up only three hits and no runs. He had these two seamers and sliders. He also had this pitch that I have as low. I think anybody would have as low. And had this amazing two-pitch strikeout. You never see this. It's awesome. Thank you, pitch timer. We had Chris Sale making his debut for the Braves yesterday. He had seven strikeouts in five and a third innings, giving up two runs, two walks, five hits. He dominated with his fastball, which was up to 97 miles an hour. Yep, the Chris Sale fastball, still there. Had six whiffs on it and five on his slider. Faced off against Ranger Suarez, who had seven strikeouts in five innings, giving up three runs on three hits. He had these wicked changeups and sinkers. And also in this game, we had this dirty 96-mile-an-hour cutter from Jose Alvarado. That is pure filth. A quick shout out to Paul Blackburn. You know, Blackburn doesn't have stuff that typically makes pitching ninja highlights. He just pitches. Dude had three Ks and seven scoreless innings, had this nasty changeup, but overall is just a pitcher. And I've got to give a pitching ninja round of applause to the dude. <laughs> Jordan Wicks had six Ks and four innings. He gave up five runs, but only two were earned. He did have 11 whiffs on his fastball and 58% whiff rate on that fastball and actually led the day in whiffs in the major leagues among starters with 19 whiffs on the game, tying Brady Singer. A solid outing for Wicks, despite giving up some runs, his stuff still looked good. Adbert Alzali also picked up a save in this game with a slider and a sword and this fastball. Clark Schmidt had five Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three runs. He had these cutters, sweepers, and painted two-seamer. And he faced off against J.P. France, who had this nasty curveball and had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs. Michael King had disgusting stuff yesterday. I mean, look at this changeup. Absolute filth. And had this front door sinker, this painted two-seamer, as well as this painted four-seamer. He had six Ks in four innings, which is really good, but also had seven walks, which is not so good, and limited his outing. But his stuff is still filthy. Garrett Whitlock had eight Ks in five innings, giving up one run. He had this backdoor two-seamer, these cutters, and change-ups. And he faced Bryce Miller, who had six Ks in five innings, gave up four runs all on home runs, which, I mean, doesn't make them any less of a run, but it shows you that it's kind of an all-or-nothing approach against him because his stuff is filthy. He had six whiffs on his splitter on 10 swings. He also had this very nasty slider, and his stuff definitely was not as bad as the numbers would indicate. He looked really good, and that new splitter is going to play. Eric Fetty had seven Ks and four and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs. He had these change-ups and sinkers. And literally, I can never say his name without thinking of Fetty Wap and going, yeah, baby, in my head. <laughs> and... It's years since Fetty Wap's done anything from what I remember. I think he's in prison, Ninja. <laughs> I think he went down hard. We may want to check this. Yeah, Ninja, he he was dealing hard drugs. He actually got arrested <laughs> at City Field, so scoring for the good guys, I guess. But uh, let's 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 move past Fetty Wap. Fetty faced Jack Flaherty, who looks resurgent. He had seven strikeouts and six innings, giving up one run and had no walks. He had these fastballs and sliders, including this painted slider. And this low one that was called the strike, but we'll take it. Also, Tyler Holton closed this game with a painted sinker, just change up this cutter. He had four Ks in one and a third innings. Very good outing from Tyler Holton. Michael Kopeck also looked electric to me. He picked up these swords on his fastballs and had this wicked slider. Um, nice roll for Kopeck here. I kind of like him in this. Brandon Fought looked really good with six strikeouts and five innings, giving up only one run. He had these sweepers and sinkers. Jake Irvin had this curveball for a sword. He had four Ks in five innings. And he faced Nick Martinez, who had this curveball and had three Ks in five innings. Tyler McGill featured his American spork. Yep, he learned it from Kodai Senga. Instead of calling it a ghost fork, he's calling it an American spork, which is a damn good name for a pitch. He had four Ks in four innings, giving up one earned run. Jose Soriano for the Angels was pitching in relief and had these ridiculous sinkers of 99 and 100 miles an hour, as well as this sick curveball. He didn't make my top five, but very well could have. We also had another Greg Weissert sighting. 
I mean, Weissert is absolutely filthy. Look at this sweeper. And I did this overlay of his sweeper and sinker. And watch how these pitches cross. I mean, they're over here. And then they end up on opposite sides significantly. This is impossible to hit. Look at that. Now into my top five pitches of the day. At number five, I have Gavin Stone and his ridiculous change-ups. Look at these change-ups. Gavin Stone had nine whiffs on 18 swings on his change-up. He had six Ks in five innings. He did give up three runs, but he looked way better than those three runs would indicate. Here's an overlay of his 97 mile an hour fastball with his changeup, and you can see why this is a problem. These two things tunnel, and that changeup drops like a stone. Also, Stone was able to overcome this tipping with his pitch comm during an interview with Kike Hernandez. Check this out. No plans. All right, one one pitch. That's down. I'll wait, my team. Other ground screws. Good change up there. The other kick can beat me to third, and he's thinking the same thing. Change up. I'm Oi. Yeah, this was outrageous. The ESPN decided to bring on the Astros for the broadcast team, which was a, a strange move, I thought. Man, Astros catching strays in this, Will. What is up with that? Not cool at all. But, you know, if I'm a Cardinals fan and I'm watching a broadcast at the stadium, I'm yelling it out. I'm going, change up! I'm not sure it would have helped because Gavin Stone's changeup was that filthy, but hey, you need all the help you can get. He outdueled Steven Matz, who was actually really good. Matz had three Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had this paint dish sinker against Otani, as well as his killer changeup. And keeping with that changeup theme, Nazbil Krismat had these sick changeups in relief in this game. Just disgusting stuff. At number four, we have Kevin Gosman splitters. As usual, I couldn't pick out just one. He had a short outing, picking up six Ks in four to third innings, giving up two hits and one run. But his splitter looks like it's in mid-season form. At number three, we have Araldis Chapman versus Jazz Chisholm. And I don't know which pitch. I mean, maybe this first pitch is the fourth filthiest pitch, but I just love this at bat because Jazz, for some reason, is having a whole lot of fun striking out against Araldis Chapman. I mean, he's just got a big smile on his face the whole time. You got to love playing the game, I guess, Ninja. <laughs> I mean, granted, maybe they have a behind-the-scenes rivalry or something. I don't know, but that's a darn big smile that Chisholm had. Looked like he was having a ball out there. Chapman also had this 101-mile-an-hour heater and classic Chapman stare down. He has now thrown 101 miles an hour in 50 consecutive seasons that is an all-time record the closest to him in an active streak is Jacob deGrom who's not quite active right now as well as Bruce Dark Ratterall, both of them with five consecutive seasons it shows you how ridiculous Chapman's velocity has been over the years at number two we have Yanir Cano with this change up to Mike Trout this thing broke 21 inches arm side as well as had this ridiculous sink I mean look what he does to Trout here that is not fair I overlaid his changeup with his slider so you can see how much ground those pitches take up. I mean, they start out kind of in the same place, and look at where these things end up. Totally nuts. I also love Yanir Cano's stare down, which, coincidentally, he got from our number three pitcher of the day, Araldis Chapman. He stole Araldis Chapman's stare down. At number one, we have Reed Detmers with this ridiculous duck curveball. I mean, arguably, this might have been a tiny bit out of the zone. If you look where the pitch tracker is, it's almost touching the plate, but it's clearly indicating a ball. For those out there who don't know, if it's a circle that's open, so not a filled in circle, that means it's a ball on the pitch tracker. And if it's a solid dot, that means it's a strike. But typically that broadcast pitch tracker picks up the pitch at the front of the plate. So this pitch had a little bit of ground it might have made up on some portion of the plate to touch it because if any part of the ball touches any part of the zone it's a strike but i'll still go with ball it's still ridiculous getting struck out on a pitch that you're ducking out of the way of and this pitch will be seen for years to come detmers had seven strikeouts in five innings giving up one run on two hits it is elevated fastballs these sliders and some more curveballs he outdueled tyler wells who had seven strikeouts and six innings, giving up three earned runs. Wells started out the game kind of weak, 
but he finished very strong, retiring his last 14 hitters, picking up 16 whiffs, and had this changeup, cutter, and fastball. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. The Rays Bat Boys deserve gold gloves. I'm awarding it to them right now. My picks of the day today, and we are going for three parlays in a row, are Sean Mania for 6Ks or more, Tristan McKenzie for 6Ks or more, and Shota Imanaga for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?